This Victoria lawyer has dealt extensively in native land issues. It's dangerous to the, to the province as a whole. He's alarmed that Liberal leader Gordon Campbell might rip up the agreement being negotiated with the current government and the Nishka. Our society would grind to a halt if governments felt free to rip up the agreements made by previous governments. The Nishka have been working on a land claim settlement for nearly 20 years. During the weekend, Premier Harcourt regarded the progress made with the Nishka as one of his government's proudest accomplishments. It's to be the first government in 125 years to start the process of reconciliation with our Aboriginal <laughs> brothers and sisters. The same day Harcourt praised the negotiations, Liberal leader Gordon Campbell said if he becomes Premier, the Nishka deal could be out the window. We won't uh, respect a settlement that does not reflect the principle of one law for all British Columbians. Well, I don't think there's any way to mince words. It undercuts the entire treaty process. And what it's going to do is create a lot of uncertainty. What's going to happen is we're going to see more roadblocks. We're going to see more litigation. We're going to see a fundamental lack of trust in the legitimacy or the ability of government to deliver. I find it quite hard to believe. The Nishka's tribal chief is fuming over Campbell's remarks. We're not going back to square one to water down uh, an agreement that is already watered down. And we're not going to do that. This native leader says Campbell needs a lesson in constitutional law. Canada has finally recognized that there is such a thing as Aboriginal and treaty rights. In fact, the courts have gone farther than that and said that Aboriginal rights is a legal concept. This is not a matter of pulling something out of the hat. Normally, the musings of an opposition leader months before an election wouldn't cause such a stir. But with the NDP in deep trouble and the Liberals on a roll, people are paying more attention to Campbell as a potential premier. But right now, one group, natives, aren't wishing him a lot of success in that endeavor. Steve Hauser, CBC News, Victoria. Almost 30 years later, party leaders are discussing similar issues as British Columbians head to the polls. Joining us now is Robert Phillips, political executive with the First Nations Summit. Robert, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Yeah, good to be here. So, Robert, let's begin with B.C. Conservative leader John Rustad. He has said he would uh, repeal B.C. legislation adopting the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, or as many know it as UNDRIP. What do you make of the party's reconciliation plan they have put forward instead? Yeah, it's a lot much, much more than economics. I think they call it economic reconciliation. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, a First Nation or a nation in British Columbia that's been here for thousands of years, we all know the history of this land, and you have Supreme Court of Canada declaring Aboriginal title lands and Aboriginal rights throughout British Columbia, and uh, where do you go after you negotiate, uh, after you have a court case or if you're at the table? you know, with the First Nations Summit, treaties, agreements, and other constructive arrangements. What happens is you have to negotiate. So that was quite interesting hearing about the, the Campbell case. And, and I remember the referendum that followed where people were trying to give opinions on, you know, Aboriginal rights and title. And sure, you can have your opinion, but it's enshrined in law, court case after court case after court case that First Nations have won. Now, this past spring, the BC NDP introduced changes to the Land Act that would have allowed shared decision-making with First Nations. The changes were scrapped after public backlash, and EB has now said his party will not attempt to amend the Act again if re-elected. What does this tell you about how the party will proceed if re-elected? Well, it's no surprise, actually. If you remember, there was a lot of shenanigans that were going on. Uh, right. There was a lot of misinformation, people saying that their land was going to be taken away. The land was already taken away 150 years ago. You know, again, First Nations were here for thousands of years. And so with that, through negotiations, through everything that I've uh, already mentioned, uh, we're at a place now where, you know, when we look at the Land Act or we look at treaty negotiations, we have to have those discussions. And um, so I'm just thinking about, you know, all the to turn it around, the, the positive engagements that we've been having with the, the Premier, uh, EB, uh, and the NDP government, where, you know, we're looking at the UN Declaration, the Declaration Act, we're talking about setting up a policy, uh, setting up a procedure or a process 
where we can have discussions, negotiations in a civilized manner where there's, you know, all the facts are on the table and we're, we're talking technical issues, alignment of laws, we're talking, you know, children and families, we're talking education, all of those things that First Nations have been taking care of themselves for, again, thousands of years. Some very, very uh, eye-opening and insightful things to think about. Thank you so much, Robert Phillips, political executive with the First Nations Summit.